ah, time to choose capacitors for my next design. It's kind of like choosing the best shoes. There are countless options. Do I want the comfortable flats, the cute heels, or maybe some sneakers? Or maybe those supportive walking boots that bring a little style into the equation. Huh. How about film capacitors or ceramic? No, I need more capacitance than that. So maybe electrolytic or aluminum electrolytic with a sensible heel. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. If you're as confused about capacitor selection as I am, don't worry. My guest today will help us all sort it out. We'll be talking with Nick Steven from Kemet about aluminum electrolytic capacitors, which bring some great benefits like long life, high transient voltage performance, and, well, let's bring in the expert to tell us more. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find more information about aluminum electrolytic capacitors from Kemet. Hi, Nick. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Amelia. Thank you for having me. Okay, so MLCCs are a super hot topic these days, but aluminum electrolytic technology is one that we have yet to discuss. That's correct. Before we get started, here is a quick agenda of what we'll be covering today. We'll start with some of the basics of aluminum, then we'll get into some of the construction and manufacturing of aluminum electrolytics. Then we'll talk about some of the main applications, followed by some electrical parameters. Then we'll get into our new product launches. It's obvious there are several options when it comes to capacitors. If you go on mouser.com slash Kemet, you'll arrive at this page that shows all of our capacitors and other products available on mouser.com. As you can see, aluminum is the first product here. You can click on that to find more information about our lineup of aluminum electrolytic capacitors. Aluminum electrolytic capacitors have long life expectancy, high transient voltage performance, high ripple current capability, and optimized designs available upon request. Before we talk about aluminum electrolytic capacitors, let's brush up on some high school chemistry. Everyone should be familiar with or at least have seen the periodic table of elements. If you look closely, you will find that aluminum is at number 13. It has an atomic mass of 26.9, Aluminum is considered to be a basic metal. They're lightweight. It has good electrical and thermal conductivity. They're non-toxic and non-magnetic. And most importantly, they're environmentally friendly. That's great, Nick. Now, I'm excited to hear more about aluminum electrolytic capacitors. Sure. This is the construction of an aluminum electrolytic can. As you can see, there are three layers to this. First, we have the anode foil, which is where the current flows in from outside. Then we have the cathode foil, which is where the current flows out. The anode and cathode is then separated by a paper, which is impregnated with electrolytes. This is then rolled into a can. We'll talk more about the manufacturing process shortly. The physical model of aluminum electrolytic consists of an anode plate and a cathode plate, as we talked about in the last slide. A fine aluminum oxide dielectric layer is created naturally on the cathode plate, which is much thinner than the anode plate. The separator paper and electrolyte in the middle keeps these plates from making physical contact. The thickness of this dielectric determines the voltage rating of the capacitor. Okay, so what does the manufacturing process look like? The manufacturing process begins with slitting the foil. This is where the foil is cut depending on the capacitance value and dimensions. The foil and paper goes into winding after that where it's rolled into a cylindrical shape. After that, the tabs are welded onto the deck. Once this is complete, it goes into the impregnation chamber. This is where the capacitor is soaked in electrolytes so the paper can absorb all the electrolytes. The capacitor is then sealed and put in a can. Then it goes to the aging process. The aging process repairs the damaged parts of the dielectric where the foil was slitted and the rated voltage is then applied. Finally, the capacitor goes into standard testing such as ESR, capacitance, and leakage current. So Nick, where do you see these capacitors being used? Aluminum electrolytic capacitors can be found in applications such as industrial, renewable energy, power conversion, and automotive. Some of the circuit functions of these capacitors include DC power distribution, inverters and DC link, UPS buffering, decoupling or bypassing, etc. Now this table shows some of the important electrolytic electrical parameters. As you can see, the capacitance increases as the temperature increases, and the capacitance decreases as the frequency increases. Now for ESR, which is equivalent series resistance, goes down as the temperature increases and the ESR 
decreases as the frequency increases. It is important to know that higher the temperature, the better the ESR. The leakage current is primarily caused by imperfection in the oxide layer. The leakage current increases when the temperature increases and when the component is stored for a long period of time. A lower leakage current provides an improvement in the life expectancy. Okay, cool. That really makes sense. But you lost me a little bit when you mentioned life expectancy. Could you elaborate a little bit more on that? Sure. Aluminum electrolytic capacitors slowly degrade over time. And once the capacitor has degraded beyond a specific amount, the capacitor is considered to have failed. Now, how exactly can we improve the life of these capacitors? The temperature has the largest effect on life. The relationship between life and temperature is defined by Arrhenius law. This law simply states that the life of your capacitor doubles for every 10 degrees Celsius drop in the temperature. Again, the life of your capacitor doubles for every 10 degrees Celsius decrease in your temperature. Another way to increase life is to derate the voltage. Okay, so tell me more about derating a voltage. If electrolytic capacitors are operated below their rated value, then the component will be under less operating stress, which in fact improves life. The graph on the left shows the relationship between the derating factor and the percent of rated voltage. The recommended derating percent is 85% for these capacitors, and the life expectancy at the full rated voltage is multiplied by the voltage rating factor, which is usually provided by Kemet, and you're able to get your new life expectancy. To better illustrate this concept, I have a short example. If we take a look at this part, which is of course available on master.com, you will see that the rated voltage is 400 with 105 degrees Celsius, and it has a life of 7,000 hours. Using the recommended derating percent, we derate the part for 15%. When you take 15% of 400, you get 60. Then you subtract the 60 from 400 to get 340 volts. At 105 degrees Celsius, the derating factor is 1.35, which is, of course, provided by Kemet. We take the life expectancy at the operating voltage, then you multiply it with the derating factor, which is 1.35, and you get 9,500 hours. As you can see, that's a 2,500 hours increase in life. This could be crucial for many applications. Now, Nick, at the beginning of the slide, you said that the capacitor can fail. So what are some of the factors that could cause a capacitor to fail? Some of the potential failure modes are capacitance change, ESR increase, and leakage current increase. Let's take a look at ESR increase, for example. I mentioned earlier that lower the ESR, the better it is. A possible reason for ESR increase could be a reduction in electrolyte, anode or cathode foil capacitance drop. And the possible causes for these could include operating conditions, excessive thermal stress, over voltage, etc. Okay, great. Now, what new products are being offered by Kemet? Kemet offers a complete line of aluminum electrolytic capacitors for both general purpose and demanding power applications. As they share a cylindrical construction, the main differences are dielectric, termination style, and size. At first, we have our snap-in capacitors. Our snap-in capacitors can be found on electrical vehicle onboard chargers, process control, AC motor control, etc. They have a capacitance range up to 240,000 microfarad and up to 600 volts. Some of our snap-in capacitors are AC Q200 qualified and can withstand up to 20G vibration, which is an important feature. For automotive applications requiring high vibration capabilities, we're introducing our ALA series high vibration snap-in. So can you talk more about the 20G vibration capability? Of course. Our standard snap-in series could only withstand up to 10G vibration, but with our new series, it can withstand up to 20G of vibration. Now, Nick, how is that possible? If you take a look at the blue circle here, this represents the aluminum electrolytic can. Then we have the yellow circle inside, which represents the winding of the foil and paper inside. Now, this illustration represents our capacitors with 10G vibration. Now, Amelia, I want you to pay close attention to the yellow circle inside. What do you see here? It looks like the circle got bigger. Okay, so what does that mean? It means that there is more foil winding in the 20G capacitor compared to the 10G? That's correct. Improvements to the internal robustness of the capacitor can be made by winding more foil, which helps reduce the vibration costs inside the capacitor for different applications. Now, you might be wondering, how much of a difference does this make? Over here, we have two parts with the exact same case size. If you take a look at the rated capacitance, you will see that the second part has a higher capacitance than the first one. And that is because the second part is, in fact, the one that can withstand up to 20G vibration. That totally makes sense. But what else is Kemet offering? For demanding high-density applications, 
we have our ALC series high capacitance, high voltage snap-in, which you can find on master.com. When comparing our standard ALC 10 part with the new ALC 70, we're able to keep the same capacitance and voltage values with reduced case size and cost, or we can keep the same case size with increased capacitance and performance. Now, we offer two rated temperatures for our high capacitance snap-in series. We have the ALC 70 with voltage rating up to 600 volts and has a long life up to 18,000 hours. Then we also have our ALC 80 series with the voltage up to 500 volts and long life up to 9,000 hours. This shows the complete lineup of our snap-in series. As you can see, we have three different rated temperatures. We have 85, 105, and 125 degrees Celsius. We offer those in our standard series, premium, or automotive series. Next, we have our screwed terminal capacitors. For applications demanding compact size and high capacitance, we're introducing the ALS series screw terminal, which you can also find on master.com. You can find screw terminals in applications such as inverters, power supplies, or motor controls. They have a capacitance range up to 1.3 million microfarad and a voltage up to 550 volts. The screw terminals are known to have long life expectancy, high ripple current, and they have different mounting and assembly options. For applications demanding compact size and high capacitance, we're introducing the ALS series screw terminal, which you can find on master.com. When comparing our standard ALS 30 part with the new ALS 70, we're able to keep the same capacitance and voltage values with reduced case size and cost, or we can have increased capacitance and performance in the same case size. Okay, so do you have these in the same rated temperature as the snap-in, or is that different? Yes, just like the snap-in, the screw terminals come in two different rated temperature. We have the 85 degrees Celsius and we have the 105 degrees Celsius. The 85 degrees Celsius, which is the ALS 70, has a voltage range from 25 to 550 volts, and they have a long life up to 20,000 hours. Our 105 degrees Celsius, which is the ALS 80 series, has a voltage rating from 25 to 500 volts and a long life up to 9,000 hours. Our screw terminals are now being offered with offset terminals, which helps prevent reverse polarity. So Nick, you mentioned earlier that life is a key parameter for aluminum electrolytic caps. Can I calculate my life for these new capacitors using the techniques you went over earlier? Yes, of course. Just to summarize, we covered two different techniques that can be used to increase life. The first one was Arrhenius Law. And Arrhenius Law was the life of your capacitor doubles for every 10 degrees Celsius decrease in temperature. The second way to improve life was to derate your voltage. To make this process easier, we have created a tool called the Life Calculator, which you can find on engineeringcenter.com under Design Tools. You can also access Engineering Center through Mouser under Resource and Support. I encourage everyone to have a look at this Life Calculator to see how we can help you in your next application. Excellent. Well, I'm going to click that link on mauser.com and check out more information. But for now, Nick, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Amelia. Thank you for having me. Hope this helps. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find more information about aluminum electrolytic capacitors from Kemet. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. Can't miss it right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube. Keyword EE Journal.